What's up guys, my name is Soyuz and I'm a self-taught Python programmer. I've also been working as a Python developer and a content editor at Programmies. Did you know that we've been creating our recent Baja Twist videos for YouTube just using Python? We received a lot of requests asking for a tutorial. So in this video, I'll demonstrate how you can create such videos in Python using a package called Baja Twist. So let's get started. Before we get started with the video, I want to mention that the barchatrace package we customize for our videos is forked from Dexplo slash barchatrace. We've also used the feature of bar images added by Andres. Let's start by setting up the environment. In this video, I'll be using PyCharm as my Python IDE. Feel free to use any other IDE or code editor of your choice. So I'll first create a folder in my workspace and I'll call it barchatrace. So I'll say bar chart race. And now I'll open this folder with PyCharm. Then I'll open the terminal and create a new virtual environment. Virtual environments allow us to manage separate and isolated Python environments for each of our Python projects. In order to create a virtual environment, I'll first install the virtual env module from pip. I'll say pip install virtual env. As I've already installed virtual env, the requirements shows satisfied. So now I'll create a new virtual environment. I'll say virtual env, and then the name of the virtual environment, which is venv, and I'll press enter. Now, let me activate this virtual environment. I'll say dot slash venv slash scripts slash activate. I'll press enter. Now that our virtual environment is activated, let's install the bar chart trace package from our program is GitHub repository. To install a package from GitHub, I'll say pip install git plus and then the link to our GitHub repository. This link will be in the description below. You can just copy it, add and then the branch name which is master. I'll press enter. This process may take some time. And now if we do pip freeze, we can see that the bar package along with all of its dependencies are installed. In order to work with the barter trace package, we also need to install FFmpeg. FFmpeg is a command line based program for processing video and audio files. To install FFmpeg, go to the releases tab of the FFmpeg's build repository and download the latest GPL release. This link will also be in the video description. Now let's extract this folder to a C drive. I'll create a new folder in my C drive and I'll name it FFmpeg and then I'll extract all of these folders to this folder. By the way, we also need to add the location of the bin folder to our environment path variable. So I'll copy this link, I'll go to my start menu, I'll type env, go to the environments variable tab, I'll edit the path. I'll new, add a new field and I'll paste this link. I'll press OK and we're finally done. In this video, we'll recreate the bar chart race video of the top computer science schools. So let's first get all the necessary data. In the video description, you'll find a link to download our data, but feel free to use your own data if you want. To create this video, we'll need data in two formats. The first is a CSV file that'll contain all the information for our video. Let me open this CSV file in Google Sheets so that we can better understand its format and contents. As you can see, we've got the date column as the index column that contains all the years and we've got separate columns for each of our 13 schools. You might also have noticed that our data has some missing fields. We'll deal with them later in our program. The other data we need is a folder containing all the images for our columns. Here, we've got the logos of size 216 by 216 for each of our schools. Notice that the image names must exactly match the column names from the CSV file. Again, if you're working with custom data, make sure that your CSV and image files are also in the same exact format. Now let's start coding our video. First, let's create a Python file where we will write all of our code. I already have this main.py file created automatically by PyCharm. First, I'll remove all of this code. Then I'll import the bar chart race library as BCR. So I'll say import bar chart race as BCR. 
I will also import the pandas library to read the contents of the CSV file and to use data frames. So I'll say import pandas as pd. Now I'll import the data from the data.csv file. So I'll say df equals to pd dot read csv and I'll pass in the file name which is data.csv. I'll also specify the index column as date. So I'll say date. As I previously mentioned, we have few empty fields for each of the columns. So I'll use the fill any method of the pandas data frame to fill these empty fields with a zero. So I'll say df dot fill any fill any and I'll pass 0, 0.0. I'll also specify in place equals to true so that our original data frame is modified. Now it's time to use the bar chart race package. Inside this package, there's a function called bar chart race that creates the video. This function can take a lot of arguments allowing us to fully customize our video. Let's first run the help command on this function to read its doc strings. So I'll go to my Python console tab in PyCharm and then I'll import the bar chart race package as BCR. So I'll say import bar chart race as BCR. Then I'll run the help command on this function. So I'll say help bcr dot bar chart race. I'll press enter. And as you can see, there's a long list of parameters. You don't need to memorize all of them as you can just use the help command whenever you want. Let's use some of these parameters. The first and the main parameter is the df parameter. The df parameter allows us to specify a pandas data frame parameter that refers to our CSV data. So I'll come back to my code editor and I'll say bcr dot bar chart race. And then I'll specify the df as our CSV data, which is df. Since the full video takes some time to render, I'll use only the first five rows of our data for now. So I'll use the slicing operator to get only the first five rows of our data. The other parameter is the file name parameter. File name refers to the name of the video that will be created. You can also specify a path name if you want. As you can see, all of these formats are supported. So I'll specify the file name as video.mp4. Let's skip other parameters for now. I'll use just one more parameter called image label folder to specify the location of our images. So I'll say image label folder and I'll say bar image labels. Now I'll save this file and I'll run the code. Okay. As you can see, a video.mp4 file was created in our current working directory. Let's open this video file. It doesn't look pretty at the moment, but don't worry, we'll get there. Currently, the size of our figure is small. It is about 6 by 3.5 inches. So everything looks cramped up. Let's start by changing the size of our figure. There's a fig keyword args parameter that can be used to change the figure properties. The argument should be passed in a dictionary format. It should have three keys, the fig size, DPI, and face color. The fig size key is used to specify the width and height of the figure in inches. The DPI controls the resolution of the video, that is the dots per inches. Finally, the face color specifies the background of the color of our figure. So I'll come back to my code editor and I'll specify the fig keyword arcs as a dictionary and I'll pass the fig size as 26 by 15. So I'll say 26 comma 15. I'll also specify the DPI as about 120 and then I'll specify the face color. Oops, I'll specify the face color as a custom color. So I'll say F8, FA and FF. Now I'll save this file. I'll run the code. Now I'll open this video file again. As you can see, now our video looks much more spacious than before. You can also change the orientation and the sorting of the bars. But for this video, I'll use the default horizontal orientation and the default sorting, which is in descending order. Currently, all of our 13 bars are being displayed. Let's limit that to 10 using the end bars 
parameter. So I'll say n bars equals to 10. The fixed max parameter is used to change the behavior of the x-axis. If it is set to false, the values in the x-axis will change with time as per the maximum data. If it is set to true, however, the maximum axis value will remain constant for the duration of the animation. Let me change it to true and you'll see what I mean. I'll specify the fixed max as true. Now I'll save this file and I'll run the code. Let me open this video file and as you can see the values in the x-axis will remain constant for the entire video. I want the values of the x-axis to change as per the maximum value. So for now I'll keep this as false. Let's look at some more parameters. The steps per period parameter lets you decide the smoothness of the animation. It is the number of steps to go from one time period to the next. By default, it is 10. Let's change that to 45. So I'll say steps per period as 45. Similarly, the period length parameter lets you decide for how long to animate each row of our data. The default value is 500 milliseconds. Let's change that to 1500. So I'll say period length as 1500. Also, there's a colors parameter we can use to provide a custom palette of colors for the bars. So I'll say colors and I'll specify a list of colors. Then I'll save the file and I'll run the code. Okay, this video is done rendering. So I'll open this video file. And as you can see, the animation looks much more smoother than before. And our video lasts for a bit more longer. Also, the custom colors that we specified have also been implemented. Let's now look at the title parameter. The title parameter is used to set the title of the figure. You have to provide a set of parameters in dictionary format. So I'll say title equals to a dictionary and let's specify the label as top computer science schools 2000 2020. Then I'll also change the font size so I'll say font size as 52. I'll also change the font weight. So I'll say weight as bold. And I'll provide a custom padding. So I'll say pad of about 40. Also, there's a period label parameter that is used to set a label at a specific location in the frame. This parameter should also be passed in a dictionary format. So I'll come back to my code editor and I'll specify the period label as a dictionary and I'll pass the x value as 0.95. So I'll say 0 0.95, Oops, 0.95. I'll specify the y value as 0.15. So I'll say 0.15. I'll also specify the horizontal alignment as HA as right so that it appears at the right side of the screen and the vertical alignment VA as center. I'll also change its font size to about 72 and I'll specify the font weight. So I'll say weight as semi bold. So I'll say semi bold. Since we've resized our figure, the labels in our video look very small at the moment. Let's change that using the bar label font and the tick label font parameters. Bar label refers to the text associated with the bar and the tick label refers to the text associated with the x-axis and the y-axis. So I'll come to my code editor and I'll specify the bar label font and I'll change the font size to 27. And then I'll do the same for the tick label font. So I'll say tick label font and I'll specify the size to 27 as well. I also want to change the property of the bars. For this, I'll use the bar keyword arcs parameter. To change the opacity, I'll say bar keyword arcs, I'll specify it as a dictionary, and I'll specify the alpha, which is the opacity, as about 0.99. Then I'll also set the width of the edges to zero. So I'll say LW, and I'll say zero. Now I'll save this file and I'll run the code.
Let me open this video file. And as you can see, there's a title text at the top of the video. There's also a period label at the right side. Also, the bar label and the tick label fonts have been adjusted. By the way, we can even change the formatting of the labels. Let me show you what I mean. Since our CSV file has up to two decimal places of data, I want the bar label to also have up to two decimal places of data. Also, at the moment, the period label has this unnecessary decimal formatting that I want to remove. We can do this using the bar text template and the period template parameters. Bar text template helps us adjust the formatting of the bar labels. I'll come to my code editor and I'll specify the bar text template as a string. I'll say x colon point to f. This specifies that the program should display up to two decimal places of values for the bar labels. Now I'll do the same for period labels. So I'll say period template and I'll specify the same type of formatting. So I'll say x colon. This time I'll say it's point zero f. This will remove the unnecessary decimal place in the period label. Now I'll finally save the code and run this file. I'll open our rendered video. And as you can see, the decimal formatting in the period label has been removed. And our bar labels now has up to two decimal places of data. Our video is finally ready. By the way, we've only used the essential parameters to create our video. There are many other parameters that allow us to fully customize our video. I encourage you to try them out on your own. And if you feel more explorative, you can go to the program is GitHub repository and read the code to figure out how the bar chart package has been implemented. That's it for this video. You can find all the links I mentioned in the video description. And if you want more of these videos, let us know in the comments below and suggest us some topics that you want us to cover. And if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy programming.